Kerry Kolath. I'm here today with Professor Adrian Kier. We're looking at a brand new class he's bringing us in the Academy, the Majestic Clockwork, How We Discovered Our Solar System. Thanks for joining me, Adrian. It's always a pleasure to be at Shell Point. Thank you, Terry. Well, I love your histories. I love where you start way, 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 way back. And you've got a long way you can start back with this, right? A long way A long back. way. Yes. <laughs> We won't talk about the origin of the solar system, we'll just talk about uh, how humanity tried to interpret it. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to go uh, too, um, to be too imaginative to, um, to think about uh, the early folk um, in the time of the Egyptians and before were very influenced by what was going on in the skies. The sun, of course, had to be explained away and the Egyptians came up with a very good solution and that uh, where's the sun go at night? And they said that it actually is consumed by the god of the night called Nut. And then she releases it in the morning and then it carries on the back of Horus, the god, the hawk god, across the sky because it moves across the sky and then it's given to Nut and she takes it round. So they had made a very good story about the sun actually just goes round the earth. And that's the earliest in recognition and it's on all of the temples, the major temples and tombs in, um, in Egypt today. That story is illustrated. Yes, it's, it's a wonderful illustration. Nearly all the ceilings in the New Kingdom show this sign um, of Nut bending over the world uh, con conducting the sun during the night. Um, of course, even in uh, periods before a telescope, you could look out in a clear sky and you could see the major planets. So Jupiter and Saturn, big. Long way away, but big, you can see them. You can see Mars, you can see Venus, particularly because it's white, Mars because it's red. So those are the four. If you're really lucky, you can see Mercury, if you're really lucky, mm -hmm. but those are the four that they could watch. Um, and they noticed that they were moving around. You know, they kept on disappearing and then coming yeah. over the horizon. And uh, they also noticed the movement of stars. And the pole star, um, which never moves because it's on the axis of the Earth, is always there in the Northern Hemisphere. Especially the sailors not as that. And the sailors <laughs> use it for navigation. So sure. the pole star doesn't move, but the other stars move and the planets move. So they're always scratching their heads as to how does this work? And so the Greeks came up with the concept that, ah, yes, now, Earth is the center of this bunch of stuff and everything else is going around the Earth because we're the most important, aren't we? Uh -huh. We've got to be the most, Im we're the most important thing, uh, humans, so Earth must be most important, so everything else must go around us. And that's the starting point. And of course, this passes into religion. But the Greeks, Ptolemy, came up with this nice system of circles with the Earth at the center, and then the planets going around, and the sun going around, and so on. And he sort of had this presentation, um, and they made astrolabes and devices, which actually could, you could actually see this happening. So that covered life for 800 years. And then scientists, started to actually document what these planets were doing. Mm -hmm. um, and they started, and imagine this, monks would spend their whole life recording Mercury was there, and it's out there, Venus is there, and Mars is there. And so we have tables and tables and tables of data. Mm -hmm. And as people like Newton and uh, the early scientists were starting to develop methods of calculation, astronomical calculation, the really clever people could, this is before telescopes, they could actually now take this measurement and put them into some form of prediction, mm -hmm. an equation by which these planets were going round and round, and they could predict when they would come back and go away. Woohoo! But it wasn't quite right. And the only way they could make it work was by fudging it. So they said, planets don't go around in a circle around the Earth, because they don't, and therefore they had all sorts of weird and wonderful explanations where a planet would do a loop and back on itself to explain how it arrived. Oh. So they forced uh, their model on, on, on astronomy, which didn't work. So time goes by and people start to develop telescopes and now they can actually um, more accurately uh, get a, an idea of the solar system. And one bright spark decides, scratches his head, he's a um, Catholic monk, and he says, you know, this whole thing would fall into shape if we didn't have the Earth at the center of the solar system. Let's move this out somewhere. Let's put the sun at the center of the solar system, and let's see if that works better. And the equations, just like that. Not circles, but rather fat ellipses. And so by the time of Newton, they could actually define precisely when the planets would appear and go away again. Amazing. Now, here's a problem. 
Galileo, who was using his telescope to look at the um, further away planets, supported this whole model, the modern model, uh, and he wrote a book of the two systems, the Greek system and the modern system. Uh, and he said, on balance, there's only one real solution, which is the sun is at the center and we're just a third rock from the sun. Well, imagine how that went down to the Vatican. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, for over 2,000 years, it had been accepted that humanity is the most important thing in the universe, and this is our planet, so this must be the center of the universe, don't you think? And so that was the dogma of the Church of Rome. Along comes Galileo, who was supported by a number of great um, astronomers before him, and he said, these calculations are quite clear. The sun is the center of the solar system. So they say, would you like to come to the Vatican and talk to our inquisitors? And the inquisitors were simply the uh, panel of people who were going to inquire about your faith. And so he was discouraged from believing this, but he went ahead and published his papers, and he was invited back again and said, you're a heretic. You cannot possibly support this. And he said, I'm not going to retract. So they said to him, come downstairs and look at our basement. And there were signs of torture everywhere. And he came back and he said, I'm still not going to retract. So they said, well, come back next week and uh, we'll show you it again. But this time it was an action. He showed, saw people being tortured to death. And he said, okay, I'll retract. So he retracted said, I made a mistake, and he was banished to his country house where he went blind and died a few years later. Just imagine the impact of the Church of Rome on science at that point. You couldn't challenge, you couldn't use scientific analysis to challenge the Church's belief. So at that very moment when Galileo died, a young man in England was born, Newton, at the same year, and the whole of scientific research moved from the Mediterranean, where it had been since Egyptian times, to Northern Europe and the Protestant free thinkers of science. And from then onwards, it became established, as it is today, that we have the solar system. And the wonderful name that the uh, early astronomers gave to this was the majestic clockwork, because they saw it as just uh, things, the, the planets going round the sun or the earth in a clockwork type fashion. And in fact, you can still buy uh, Victorian um, um, solar systems where you can see all of the planets moving around the sun in the right order. They're wonderful to see in a museum. But I would like to <coughs> finish by saying we shouldn't forget how wonderful the solar system is. And now with your modern phones, you can download an app like Planet Search and you can go out, and I really encourage people to do this on a clear night, to go out and hold your phone up to the sky, and you will, it will guide you to where Mars is, Venus is, Jupiter is, Saturn is, and it's just amazing to see these little specks in the sky and realize how far away Jupiter and Saturn is, but they look the same size as Mars and Venus, which are our next-door planets. It is so fascinating and so beautiful. Beautiful. If you can get away from the lights the, at the night. The light pollution, yes. It's wonderful. Yeah. Well, I hope you'll join us. This is the last class in the fall semester, the Majestic Clock.